Hi everyone, Ian here, and today I'm going to be sharing one of the best modules in the Python standard library that's worth checking out, the collections module. And it's one you may not yet have encountered if you're just getting started with Python, but it's one that advanced Python users use all the time. So this is going to be one of the first uh, in a new tour of modules that's available in Python standard library, which I hope you find useful. The collections module provides advanced container data types that aren't available from Python's general purpose ones. So it's data types other than dictionary strings, ints and lists, for example. There's quite a few in the module, and for this video I'm going to focus on the ones that I've actually got experience of using. So you can see here that I've already got a um, script with them imported. So name tuple, ordered dictionary, default dictionary, counter and deck, or a double ended queue. So let's kick straight off by jumping into use of a name tuple. So a name tuple creates tuple subclasses for creating tuple-like objects. So that sounds great, but what does that actually mean or look like? So it allows us to quickly create um, classes or things that look like classes and use them without much in a simple one-liner. So in this example, I'm going to use a point, which is what's used in the... Python documentation, and you can see we've even got a suggestion from GitHub. Um, and what we've got straight away is something that we can then go off and use uh, as objects. So you saw the suggestion there of point one two, and we can now interact with that class. So we can do, for an example, we've got we can reference by their position. So x is one there y is 2. We can also do, so in fact, yeah, let's do printing it. And we can see we get a 1 as the output there, which is as expected. We can also do it the other way around. So if you did y equals 1 and x equals 2, so we can do it by keyword, um, we should find that that is then 2. There we go. Um, so this is really useful if we just want to quickly have something that we don't want to create a full-blown class for. We can even quickly add extra um, attributes there as well. So our point can have multiple positions. We can interact with them all. We can add them together. And it's just a really new, uh, really neat way of um, creating something that we can then reference and use very simply. Next, let's move on to order dictionary. Uh, so the order dictionary is a dict subclass that remembers the order in which keys were inserted, and it has a couple of useful methods for rearranging its order. Now, this is more useful in earlier Python versions, and since Python 3.7, the order of dictionary is actually guaranteed. So um, we can do, for example, create a dictionary that has a name, I don't know, uh, a dict. And then we can just add some variables to it. And then, in fact, if we make these the other way around, and then we print that out. We'll find that the order should be preserved. So we got you can see we got B first there and then A. Um, however, with an order dictionary, we get a couple of additional benefits. So so in fact, if we go back to our dictionary here, on this dictionary, we also have a method pop item. So when we do that, we will get, in fact, let's put that in the print statement. So we get the, foot, the last item, as we'd expect, um, popped off the end of it. Um, with an order dictionary that has the same components, um, so if we have a T, 
two and B is one on this. Um, then we can also, as well as doing this pop item like this, where we get B off the end, we can also pop it off the other end, which we couldn't do if it was just a standard dictionary. We'd get an error if we did that. So you can pop from the start of it as well. And we also get a another method which is move to end, which will move our the argument that we supply to the end. So there's not much let's do C here as well, so we can show what's going on. And you can see that B has been moved to the very end there. Okay, let's move on to default dictionary. So a default dictionary gives us the uh, a dict like object that allows for defaults. So you might be used to doing things like, um, let's create a So here, when we try and call get on this dictionary that we have, it's going to, so yeah, in fact, it's going to return undefined or none. Um, if we wanted to, we can, for instance, give it a default here if we wanted to. So this is our standard kind of dictionary. However, what might be easier is for us to declare a default dictionary, which allows us then to specify the type of um, what we want things to be defaulted to. So, there you go, thank you very much. So we've got a default dictionary called defaulted that has a type int. So if I then try and print out a key, and it defaults to zero, which is very handy if, for instance, we wanted to do something like thanks very much, GitHub Copilot. Um, so there we get a default is, and we can count, we're basically counting the characters in each of this string. So if we print out what defaulted then and ends up as we get one for each of them which is as we'd expect but if we use something like a word that has repeats in it we can see that we get each of those characters counted correctly and this is really handy um, if you're wanting to set um, up particular things we can also do things like adding to lists so we could then append to a list and group items, um, which, so for instance, we're just appending an array of one, but nonetheless, you can see it happening. So we end up with a list, and rather than having to set up a list as part of that default, it, um, that dictionary with that under that key, we don't have to worry about it. So that's quite handy in a number of different cases. Um, quite nicely follows on from that is the counter object, a counter um, class. So this is also a dict subclass for counting hashable objects. So if we do C equals counter cheese, my favorite word of the day. If we then print C, we will find that we have a counter object that has, as we had earlier here, um, and it's counted each of those items correctly. In fact, let's clear out this bit because it looks a bit messy. Um, if we wanted to know 
how many times a particular object appeared in it or a particular we can just access that by the key and if we access a key that doesn't exist it's not going to throw an error either so that's very useful um, we can also do this with things other than strings so I'm going to use some DC characters <laughs> well, I'll get a bug of copilot you're impressive um, in fact actually let's do that as a well in fact let's print out that so we can show you that working um, let's also do that as a dictionary impressed with the way GitHub Actions is actually just able to pull these names out of a hat. Brilliant. Um, and we, usefully it has this other um, method on it as well that allows us to pull out the most common ones. And we can just say that we want the most common first one or the most common two, and they will be neatly displayed. So we can do this in light of showing you this keys, uh, sorry, list sticks there. Um, you can also do it as keyword arguments. So let's do fruits this time. Thank you very much. And in fact, let's call these something other than C. And let's change these values. In fact, those don't need to be quoted. Let's just uh, GitHub doing its thing. Um, so we can do things quite usefully, quite nicely on these, in fact, where we just um, do create other counters from this. And then if we print that out, we've got another counter that actually has added those two together, which is kind of useful. Um, we can also get the total of everything that's in those counters. And we can also... Um, Do the same with minusing these away. So if you do D, and you'll notice that this looks slightly different in that, in fact, actually, let's make it obvious what's going on here. So if in the first one we do not have pairs, you can see that we don't get pairs, a negative index of. A negative value for the pairs there. Um, what we need to use is subtract instead. So we can do pending, but you need to watch out for subtraction. And in fact, actually, what we want is because it's returning, it's updating the original. So we can see that we've got oranges is 10, apples is 8, and pears is negative 1, which is what we'd expect. Okay, so hopefully, I mean, that's a very simple way of setting up a counter. Um, obviously, it does away with what we were dealing with in the previous example there of having to iterate all these objects. So that's very useful and handy. And the final one that we're going to go through quickly is a double-ended queue or deck. So here we can create a queue just on a double ended queue on a string, for example. So let's do on A, B, C, D, F, G. Yeah, that'll do. Print that out. And again, let's clear this down a bit. 
and we've just got a, a, a deck, uh, <laughs> as you can see. Um, we can pop, as we'd normally do, on a stack, not opposite, pop. So we get the last item off of that queue. Um, we can also append to that. So if we did d dot append, uh, let's just print out d. Doo -doo. So if h on the end there, um, you can. Well, there we go. The GitHub Copilot is preempting me there. So we also have left versions of these methods as well. So. In this example, GitHub Copilot wants to show you append left. So if I do that, you can see that it's actually appended to the left of this queue or this deck. Um, so rather than put it on the right hand side, we have it on the left. But we can also do a, we also have the same for pop. So we can pop on the left. And in fact, let's do that in the print statement. And you can see we've popped the first item off that queue, which is what we'd expect. Um, we also have the rotate method. So we do d dot rotate two, and then print that out. You can see that the last two have been rotated on from the right hand side have been rotated on to the start of this queue and in fact if we wanted to do it the other way if we wanted to rotate it the other way we'd need to use a negative value so you can see the first two so b and a have been put on the end of this queue so at the end is deck a and b so yeah that's the last of the five uh, collection types that I thought would be interesting to cover, cover today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, it's going to give me an idea of what sort of videos to make more of in the future. Also, if you have other modules that you'd like me to cover here, uh, be sure to let me know about them in the comments and I'll think about putting them into a future video. And let me know if you found this useful uh, and I'll speak to you soon in the next video. Alright, bye for now.